Saturday Scoreline. Your music, your sports. With thanks to the full range of Skoda vehicles at La Hearts, the home of Skoda in Kilkenny. LaHearts.ie. KCLR. Welcome back to KCLR Saturday Scoreline. Don't know what happened there. Some gremlins in the system. Now, I hopefully am able to say that I'm joined on the line by both of the guys from the uh, hugely, hugely popular Energized podcast. Boys, how are you getting on? Yes. <laughs> Very happy. Ross and Barry, thanks so much for joining. And your patience. I don't know what happened there. Oh, man. I uh, think it happened. <laughs> These things do. As, yeah. as I was saying to Ross, uh, Barry, how, how are you coping uh, running a sports podcast and there's no sports on? How are you getting your sport fix? Uh, to be honest, I've been watching highlights of like when Man U were ba- going back in the day on YouTube. <laughs> 1999. 1999, yeah. Yeah, just on repeat. On repeat with my dad, yeah. Now, what, 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 <laughs> one, one of the things that you'd still be able to, maybe able to get your sporting fix on is the UFC with Dana White talking about uh, Khabib and Ferguson and he seems adamant that it's going ahead. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Um, the thing is, myself and Ross were talking about this and we said that we wouldn't care if they had it in the UFC Performance Institute. Just the two of them. Let them go. But uh, Ross, say as a fighter, would you not need to feed off that energy? Is that is that not something that would be intrin- like in in instinctive into you to be able to feed off the energy of a crowd? I think these two are two quite unique characters, and I don't think either of these two actually care about the crowd. Being honest, uh, I'm sure when Khabib was fighting against Michael Johnson, he was beating him up and then talking to Dana White in time. Yeah, and Tony Ferguson seems to be an absolute madman, and he doesn't actually care at all about anything far actually just fighting someone because they were talking yeah. about Dubai as a as a possible place but with the whole world being in shutdown are you reckoning it's a, it's like a performance centre job I think where there's a will there's a way and where there's budget and money involved anything is possible so I think they can probably get the fight anywhere so there's no there's, there's no um coronavirus case and monitoring at the moment so maybe we'll have to fight there <laughs> <laughs> that, that, yeah. I, I'd imagine that they'd have the 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 you know the facilities to be able to set up something like that in Monaghan, and I'm sure that there'd only be uh, more than uh, forthcoming with it. Yeah, and but also Cage Warriors, Cage Warriors was on last night in Manchester, and there was no, uh, there were no fans. So I mean, it is it is possible, but who knows? If there is, if it makes money, it makes sense, and everyone will be tuning in. Yeah, certainly. Well, it's 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 creating content for people to be able to watch, and with a fight like Khabib and Ferguson, and especially uh, a lot of Irish people come across uh, Khabib due to the fight with McGregor. It's a it's a really interesting fight to happen. And speaking of McGregor, talking about interesting fights, you're looking at Gaethje then maybe next for him. Yeah, very much a possibility. That Gaethje fight seems to be on the rise. And oh, Roddy, I think was Don talking the other day about it possibly happening in July. Uh, look, Connor said he wants to stay busy this year. He says he has an active season. I think the isolation can only help him. He'll have to stay out of bars and uh, in, in the house doing a bit of training. So, look, anyone's on a fight, it's must be TV. Whether you love him or hate him or whatever your opinion is of him, you, you make sure you watch it one way or the other. Certainly. Yeah, yeah but also, don't, don't shut down the possibility of Nate Diaz as well, because that door is still open. Rather than open up a new door against Gaethje, you know what I mean? He doesn't really have beef with him. Yeah, well, both of them, both of them coming off the back of fighting uh, Cowboy as well. It, it seems like it's a it's a ready made fight, and I know Justin Gaethje has called him out quite a bit, also. I think yeah. I think Justin Gaethje doesn't really care about it as, as much, but uh, the real underlying factor is Justin Gaethje's manager is also Khabib's manager, mm. so uh, he, he wants that bread. So oh, certainly, yeah. Uh, like l- looking at the UFC, though, say the past uh, the past three events, fight night was called off. UFC Columbus, UFC uh, Portland called off. Uh, but like, why why is it the Khabib and Ferguson fight? Why is that the special one that's making a go ahead? Like Dana White saying, right. whatever it takes, it's probably not even in the US, but the fight is happening. Yeah, Ross, you take it away. Break man. This, China, I'll, bre- I'll break this down for you. Right in 2015, Tony Ferguson was supposed to fight Khabib for the first time. Khabib, Khabib pulled out due to a rib injury and Tony Ferguson fought Edson Barboza. In 2016, Tony had to in his lungs and he had to pull out of a fight and then Khabib had to fight Daryl Horter. Then in 2017, Khabib ate too much tiramisu and then he actually couldn't make weight and then there was no fight. And then in 2018, Tony Ferguson fell over some wires and Khabib fought Ally Quinta for the belt. So this is the fifth time this fight has been made. But the real reason this fight has been made 
because that it's on pay per view. Yeah. So the UFC can actually make a load of money from selling the fight from at home. They don't actually need the people in the audience, and they make an awful lot of money. The last time we fought Dustin Poirier over in in Abu Dhabi, uh, so one million pay per views and one million pay per views at uh, sixty nine ninety nine a pop. I'm pretty sure it comes close to seventy million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> 70 million boys make a fight. That's, That's some ma- good, good math, Ross. Yeah, very good yeah. maths. Very quick maths. Quick maths. Maths my strong point. Uh, if you're looking at, uh, were you watching Cage Warriors yourself? Then, if you're saying that there's no crowd in, I've, I, I'm a professional wrestling fan, so I've been watching some wrestling with no with no crowd. It's a bit kind of uh, eerie, and it kind of throws you off a, a, a tad bit. But uh, when you're watching the yeah. fights, uh, were you still able to enjoy them? Or did you watch Cage Warriors in Manchester? Yeah, I tuned in. I thought it was fine. Uh, I, th- I, yeah, think I, it, watched, I think I think Steve yeah. Brazil. Sorry? Well, no, I, I was okay with it. I actually sort of I was like, you can actually get more of an insight to what's being said. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of, like, it kind of breaks it down for you a bit. You have to get the fans to get you going, whereas in, in fighting, you're, you're, you have to go or else you're going to get KO'd. <laughs> and is there anyone we should be watching out for on the Irish scene? Like, being down here in Kilkenny, we have Miles Pricer. Um, he, he, he'd be our, our, our top MMA guy. Is there anyone that we should be watching out for in Ireland? Well, definitely Ian Gary in Cage Warriors, yeah, anyway. Ian Gary, the future, he's called. He's actually a brilliant player. Uh, Paul Hughes is also another one to look out for. Oh, uh, he, he, he's up north. He, he looks very, very good. But, like, there's plenty. If, if you ever watch a Bellator Dublin, like, you know what I mean? It's packed to the rafters with Irish talent. So, yeah. you know, James Gallagher is still on the rise over there. Uh, Keeper yeah, Crosby. Crosby. Uh, basically undefeated. And Will Flurry looks good at middleweight. So, you know what I mean, there's, there's plenty of talent there. You know what I mean? It, it just more so needs that bit, bit of a rub of uh, mainstream media. Mm. And yeah. then, and the likes of yourselves, you're you're trying. I can see from say your uh, your social activity, social media activity, that you're trying to promote uh, all things Irish MMA and all things Irish. You know, you're you're. It's it's not yeah. just MMA. It's rugby. It's soccer. Um, the, it, it, give us a bit about what the Energy Show is about. That's all you, Barry. You, all right, I was waiting to see. I should be directing it to Wani. I'll, I'll, yeah, we'll go to Barry first. Okay, the pressure's on. Uh, no, myself and Ross, we did a radio course together. And once we finished it, we wanted to keep doing stuff on the mic. So we were like, right, we're Irish. So that's what we, what we know the best about. And unfortunately, Conor McGregor started popping off as well. And he was flying the flag. So, uh, so And so were like, the Irish football team. As much as they weren't doing amazingly, but like Robbie Brady had scored the goal in the Euros as well, so that helped us yeah. with a uh, Koi big, and then a like, Katie Taylor, and then like Mikey Conlon, and then the Irish rugby team as well, winning the Grand Slam. Mm. So we've just been going on the Irish wave, and then uh, just going to events, and it's just been brilliant doing it with your best mate. And there's a, there's a lot to be positive of. I know, like when it comes to say the the Irish soccer team, we have a lot to look forward to. Uh, would you follow yeah. Ross much on the uh, say the Stephen Kenny side of things? Uh, the the younger age, is it? yeah, uh, yeah. Well, me and Barry actually, uh, a lot of the younger age actually follow our podcast. Uh, we we actually reach out to them all and wish them well before each game. Uh, I think it's nice to sort of follow the young people and then see them the season go through because I think I think what Ireland for age was we were getting the European Championship finals or the semi finals or the quarter finals in the seventeen, and then it didn't seem to go through. But I think an interesting thing what's going to happen with Ireland is that the Euros being moved to twenty twenty one. If we actually get there, who will be the manager? I was so just about to ask you. His contract was it's till 2020, and if Stephen Kenny was supposed to take over in 2021. So I think it's going to get very sort of finicky on the contract, whether it's uh, you take over after the Euros or whether you take over after 2020. Uh, it yeah. will be very, very interesting. But uh, why can't we just put the two of them in at the same time, have Mick, Mick at the helm, Stephen as assistant manager of the year, and then have him take over? You'd be well, having a bit of a... Both teams. Both teams play different styles. That's the thing. I like Mick McCarthy is just like long ball merchants, whereas Stephen Kenny may as well come in now. The FAI made this; they 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 created this problem, so now they should deal with it. Yeah, well, it, yeah, think- it's a it's a it's an interesting thing to 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 look at. As you said, there's two different two different styles of football played. We've seen Liverpool having co-managers as well. Not so long ago, Gerard Hulia. Um, was co-managing was Evans that he was co-managing with and uh, it, it didn't seem to work out there and you, no. obviously there no. is a succession plan happening where Kenny is going to take over naturally and it's not kind of the two of them competing for uh, for you know for the job ultimately but as you said the, the different styles of footballers and Kenny probably wanted to bring in his own players as well um, yeah 
you know, you know, I think they, it's just a blessing in disguise. Well, like I mean, obviously it's a terrible thing with coronavirus going on, but I mean, uh, the, like these Irish players now have like another year to develop. Whereas right now the under twenty ones are still raw, but like people like Adam Ida or Aaron Connolly playing in the Premier League right now, although their teams might get relegated, they'll probably stay and get more game time, so they'll be better next this time next year. Certainly, and uh, uh, Ross, what can we expect then coming up on the Energy's podcast show? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, me, me, me and Barry are going to test out doing a Skype show, so we're going to Skype each other. So that could be interesting. Uh, there could be uh, some technical, technical difficulties there. <laughs> but look, every every week we give you the latest sporting news. Hopefully, it won't just be cancellation after cancellation. We also have a bit of back and forth, a bit of banter as well. And sometimes we discuss totally random things like what we watch on Netflix or whatever. So oh. we actually just try and have a bit of crack and uh, and just bring a high level of energy to the show. But. Uh, we really appreciate you having us on. Um, we definitely love to come uh, visit you in the studio when it's all over. Yeah, you're more than welcome, boys, and we, we'll get away all that kind of technical difficulties. I'm not exactly Michael Venom Page, who you interviewed recently, but uh, you know, we'll still we'll still have a bit of bit of banter. We had a we had a top eleven actually Irish side um, of the past thirty years. Uh, we had a debate for about an hour last um, last week on KCLR Saturday scoreline. I got in a lot of trouble for including one Mr. Lee Carsley in my top 11 and he responded to it saying that I'm, he wasn't even in the top 50. Where do you lie on Lee Carsley? He's the Irish <laughs> Thomas Grabson. Ah, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> and not just because they're both balls. Yeah. Uh, Lee Carsley, I don't know if I put me in my start 11. Uh, I actually think I would have Matt Holland or uh, Mark Kinsella over him, you know that? Well, I, I, was, go- I was going pure uh, Big Jack. I, there was no, going to be no Ronnie Whelan trying to do any creativity. I was playing five at the back and I was lobbing it up to Big Niall Quinn. That's all I was doing all day. No, I was it up Legend. <laughs> well, boys, thank Here you we very go. much. Uh, we should expect more contact coming up. Barry, where can we find out more about the Energy Show? Uh, you can check us out, Ram. Instagram energized show with a Z, so it's E N E or G I Z E D underscore show. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Spotify, iTunes, and SoundCloud and YouTube. And make sure to like and subscribe. And thanks for having us on. No bothers, boys. It was a pleasure speaking to you, Ross and Barry. And uh, well, enjoy the rest of your uh, lockdown. Hope your Skype interview goes well with each other. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, Look after yourself. Thank you. Stay energized. I'll try. Stay energized. Stay energized. That was the lovely voice from uh, Energized Podcast Show. That was Barry and Ross. You can check them out on their social media channels on Instagram. They have a YouTube channel going on as well. Very entertaining. And they get some top quality interviews. As I mentioned, the likes of Michael Venom Page uh, was a guest recently on their show. They go to their massive supporters of uh, all things Irish, M- Irish MMA. So it's a fast- fantastic thing to talk to him. Hopefully we'll get him down to Kilkenny someday. We might have a Kilkenny game for them to go to someday. And it would be a pleasure again to speak to them in the studio. La Heart Saturday Scoreline. Your music, your sports. With thanks to the full range of Volkswagen vehicles at La Hearts, the home of Volkswagen in Kilkenny. La Hearts Volkswagen.ie. KCL.